It's Sunday morning, which means we have, I should just say it's, well, it doesn't matter. We have a Sunday sermon going on. I'm drinking, uh, what am I drinking? Made with love. Okay, this is made with love. Let me see what it is. Buddha teas. Well, I know this. This is uh, the uh, turmeric ginger tea here. And I have it every morning. I have my hot water and lemon. And uh, sometimes I put, uh, or I also put some cayenne pepper. And then sometimes I have a clove of garlic. Uh, this morning I don't. I guess I, this is a, it's going to be a, a day today, you know. So my sister's giving a little soiree like we used to do back. Back in the day, there was a thing. She had a thing called a breakfast club. This is before the breakfast club. This, we're talking about in the 80s. In the 80s? Yeah, in the 80s. Um, because it was a, uh, all these nurses would come over to, to her house, well, her, house, or her, her place on, uh, at River Park Towers, and they'd have breakfast. And it, this guy, I mean, they, they, one of the nurses was a, uh, was a, nobody knew he was at this gourmet cook. Oh, man, I was in charge of the pina coladas. Anyway, it got to be a big thing. I'll tell you about it later on. Well, maybe not, I won't tell you about it. Anyway. Got my own cap on because, as you know, every Sunday we read from our, our uh, what do you call this, uh, our scripture. <laughs> our scripture comes from Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. and his, um, his tome, now, the United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept. It's a compensatory counter-racist code. And guess what? It's, this is the revised edition. In fact, I'm on my way to Africa, and when I get there, I have um, I have this book, but I also have uh, the original, when I say the original, the original, stay tuned, uh, uh, of the original, original, the original, original, the big format original. Anyway, uh, this is a, uh, it's a textbook workbook for thought, speech, and or action for victims of racism, which is white supremacy. And uh, like I said, this is the uh, revised edition. Came out in twenty sixteen. So usually I um, usually you know I look for something you know da da da, and you know and then then I talk and it's supposed to be a sermon, so I'm supposed to say something after. It's a lot of times I don't. Um, but um, what what happened? Well, I was listening to Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. Uh, this week. Uh, well, you know, I download it and listen to it later. And uh, there was a guy that came on from uh, I guess he was from. Uh, Nova Scotia, up there in Canada, someplace. And he's, he, he, he was like a, a prisoner, ex prisoner. I guess he was out of jail. He's doing a court case. He was asking, you know, this Neely Fuller Jr. about stuff. And uh, he said, you know, this book was a real gem to him and blah, blah, blah. And I was thinking, you know, because you can't, you know, the, the, the prison system, well, maybe some is not going to allow this book in. However, you know, he has a ex, you know, prisoner. Well, we all prisoners, according to Mr. Neely Fuller. Oh, we are. We are. We're all prisoners, right? Um, um, we're just out, uh, we're out, we're in uh, greater confinement. He was just locked up. But I was thinking, you know, there should be a whole movement of, of ex, ex-prisoners getting out and then getting these books and, and studying them on themselves. Because that's what I, well, when I get to South Africa, I think we're going to have a little group, very small group, uh, studying from the big book. But also, uh, yesterday, I went and checked with my library here in Chesapeake, wherever I go, I go to libraries, and I uh, asked him about, you know, getting this book. And they said you have to go to the website and submit with the request to the central. I think that in Chesapeake they have three libraries, the central people, and then somebody there has to make a decision. Oh, I can't do it now, but when I come back in August, oh, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> anyway, uh, so let's just go. I, I'll do it like I do. I, I do a gullah reading every morning uh, from, from from the New Testament, the gullah Bible, right? I do it every morning. So I just pick out any spot. So I'll just take a thing from there and pick out any spot in this particular tome. Oh, law, the law section. Uh, area 5, as you may or may not know, Mr. Neely Jr. Uh, uh, suggests, or no, he says, that there are basically uh, uh, nine areas of activity. Now, nine is a good number, by the way. And everything, they're all, all interlocking somehow. And the areas of economic, economics, Education, entertainment, those are the E's, right? Uh, labor, 
law, politics, right? And then you have religion, sex, and war, counter-war. Uh, on this broadcast on Tuesdays, um, they he never talks about Area 9, war, counter-war, because, well, if you're doing war strategy, you don't tell people what's going on. You see what I'm saying? And so he deals with the other areas. And so we're going to do it area with this area here, uh, law. What do you hear? Law, law means anything that is, oh. And he has a definition for this area of law. So law means anything that is done. Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. says, you know, he's, 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 he's in his ninth decade on the planet. You really should check him out. Producejustice.com. Man. Anyway, uh, so let's just go any place here. Oh, police officers. Oh, that's a that's a topic. How long is that going to be? How long is that going to be? Should I go? Well, hey, this is a Sunday sermon. Hey, like you and you and Chuck. Yeah, it might take forty five minutes for me now. Yeah, I put my reading glasses. Uh, let's go. Law enforcement. What does it say? Turn police. No, I want to go. Let's say, while in practice of law enforcement, persons and in your general interactions with them, do the following. And you're following when you deal with law with uh, you know, law enforcement. Be as calm and courteous as you possibly can. Right? Two, answer all questions in a manner that is calm and constructive. Three, if you are not absolutely certain of the answer to a question, say you uh, say that you are not sure. Uh, four, do not use profane language. And five, do not do anything or do not do anything or say anything that may cause a greater problem. Okay, let that sink in. It's all common sense. Mr. Neely Ford Jr. talks in all common sense, right? You, you got to understand. You got to listen to them every Tuesday. Or just check them on YouTube. You know, people have a Um Then he has here police officers. Uh, no, no, let me go back. That, that was that thing, right? Let me go back because that was that section there. Then he has the police officers. But here the section says, avoid using the term police. Okay, that one here. This is Area 5 Law on uh, page 152 of the United Independent Club. Blah, 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 blah. The book, right? The, the, the revised edition. Okay, so we're just going to read this thing right up there. Avoid using the term police to describe any person now in existence. Hmm. Use the term law enforcement official. I mean, use, yeah, use the term enforcement officials to describe any person who uses force to interact the will of those who have dominant power. Never refer to a police officer as being a racist. Get that through your head. I'm sorry. I'm supposed to editorialize. I'm preaching. Preaching. Right? By the way, I wrote, when I wrote an epic poem a long time ago in the 70s called uh, Haven. Right? No, The Interrogation of Haven. Then I turned it to a play called Haven. But in, 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 the, in the interrogation of Haven, they called the police Police, P O, then capital L I C E, the police. See, that's not calling them racist. They say you you you're mispronouncing. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm sorry. Let me keep going. Explanation of this of this uh, avoid using the term police to describe any person now in existence. Use the term enforcement officials to describe any person who uses force to interact the will of those who have uh, dominant power. Never refer to a, poli the, uh, a police officer as being a racist, okay? Explanation. It is not possible for any person to be a police person, police officer, policeman, or policewoman, and at the same time be a racist. <laughs> police are people who seek and find truth and who use the truth in such a manner as to produce justice and correctness at all times and in all areas of activity. Racists, however, are people who practice white supremacy. White supremacy is the promotion of falsehood. 
non-justice and or incorrectness based on factors associated with the color or non-color of people. Okay, let this sink in while I'm sip this hot water too. Which is not hot anymore, it's just, it's warm. Okay, got that? Okay, we're still on page uh, 152. Law is anything that is done. A police person does not do anything in a manner that helps to produce or maintain non-justice. Therefore, in a known universe in which justice, the balance between peoples, does not exist, there is no evidence that police exist. What does exist are law enforcement officers. Keep in mind that a law enforcement officer is not necessarily a police officer. A police officer is a person who at all times speaks and acts in a manner that always results in justice being produced and or maintained. Next paragraph. A law enforcement officer, however, is a person who enforces a law in such a manner as to make that law effective. The law, which is the act, that is enforced, however, may not may or may not help to produce justice. In a known universe in which justice does not exist, no person can truthfully claim to be or uh, correctly be regarded as a police officer. No law among the people of the known universe has resulted in the establishment of justice. Let me do something right here. Go to the front. I think it should be here. Uh, maybe it's not here. No, I'll leave it alone. Let me keep on reading. Right? No law among people of the known universe uh, has resulted in the establishment of justice. Laws don't produce justice. According to compensatory uh, counter-racist logic, which is what Mr. Neely Fuller, you know, operates on logic, right? It is impossible for a white supremacist to be a police officer or for a police officer to be a white supremacist. The correct term for a law enforcement officer who practices uh, white supremacy, which is racism, is a suspected race soldier. Suspected race soldier. Or, I mean, suspected race soldier, suspected racist, or suspected white supremacist. Now, this is clear. I, I did a... a um, they did a a little uh, an Instagram on Elon Musk. People say he's a racist. They say you can't call anybody a racist. They're suspected racist until they prove otherwise. You, you got it. They could be an ally for you know. Right? Police do not commit brutality. Incorrect law enforcement officers do commit brutality. An incorrect Law enforcement officer is any person who speaks or acts in such a manner that produces or maintains non-justice, non-justice between people. That's what non-justice is here. Or, or non-justice, which is a non-balance between people. So non justice is a balance. Non-justice is an imbalance or non-balance between people. Uh and then we went into this thing while, you know, while in presence of law enforcement persons and in your general interaction with them, do the following. That's all thing. Be calm, be constructive, you know, don't curse, blah, 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 blah. You, I don't say blah, blah. You know what I'm saying, right? So that's uh, that's our thing for today. I better 
this page now, 152, because I got to write this up in my thing. But there is a one thing I wanted to, uh, uh, where is, the, let me say the beginning, maybe you know that's labor, it's the beginning. Okay, well, that's it. I guess that's all we're going to do for this week. And things are going to shift a little bit because things are going to shift a little bit because I'm traveling. And uh, so my weekly, there's a couple of things happening. First of all, I'm traveling. And the only books I'm carrying, well, I have the independent concept, but it, it, the original thing in Africa. So that would be the, I won't be carrying this heavy book, right? But but I will be carrying these two books. One is a thing called uh, Cataract. Cataract of Life, Soliloquies and Conscious Being by Kenneth G. Mills, right? That's this guy here, right? I'll be doing this one. And I'm bringing, I'll be uh, carrying, Getting to the Promised Land, uh, it's a four book, uh, by Dr. Kevin Cosby. Those are the two books I'm reading, not right away, but during, I'm having a 52-day uh, period of silence in Africa. I'll be in my location, in my place where I don't, there's no running water inside to do the you know, it's, it's a very low basic thing, but I'm doing it for, for 52 days. So between May 16th and July 3rd, that's what I'll be doing in Africa. I'll be, I'll be in Africa from a couple of days from now until early August. So that's what's going to happen there. So those, those, so the three things I'll be reading in that 52 day period are basically Mr. Neely Fuller Jr.'s book, uh, Dr. Kevin Cosby's book, and uh, Dr. Kenneth G. Mills' book. That's all I have to report, right? That's it for me. T. Funk Patterson's Take the Trains to Bed, letting you know what I only suspect. I'm also doing it.